Hey, welcome to the new tutorial. In this tutorial we will be making this effect. And hold on, I've not had the idea for this effect, I was inspired by the effect from this artist, Joe Carlino. I link you that in the description. But hold on, I have some improvements to this effect. So there's room for improvements. And for this we will be using a branch. And you can use the Blender Manager, a Blender Launcher for this. And it is just the same as if you would go into blender.org. I'll show it to you. So you can go into blender.org like this and then you can go here on the top of downloads and then you can scroll down onto experimental. You can click that and here you can go onto patch. And that's not right, branch, sorry. <laughs> and here you have the temp geometry nodes extrude mesh node. So this branch, we need this. So you can do the same with in the experimental and downloads here. You can search for this, but I've downloaded it already, so it is here. And let's open it. And we can click the splash screen away, and then we can delete everything. And let's add back in our cube. And then we can open our geometry nodes window, like this. And we want to create a new node tree. like that and now we don't want to have our cube so we can cut this wire and I want to have an icosphere sorry icosphere but now we have the problem that each size has only three ver vertices or three edges and we don't want that we want to have five per, per face and for this we have a dual mesh node, so we can pl plug it in here and I'm not exactly sure what this node does, but I know that for the icosphere it is for every mesh different, so for the icosphere it places on every vertex a face with 8 vertices. So, and we can work with this. So we can hire our subdivisions, like that, and it is looking nice. So with this we can use a split edges node, not this one, a split edges node, like that. And then we can use a set position node, so with this we just split the faces from each other, so we can, we can move them independently. And then we set a new position for our faces. And here go here is the trick. So we need the data from we need the position from our faces and from our points separately. Because if we were plug in the position, nothing changes. And this is because it's just our original position. And we have to we have to capture the position from our from our faces and our vertices independently. For this we have a node, the capture attributes node. And we don't want to have float, we want it to vector. And we can do it like this. And now we are capturing the attribute for the point. And if we plug this in, nothing changes because it is our original position. And if we would use the same thing and then we will set it to face, we want to have the same position. And we would use this, everything is gone because the faces are scaled to zero, so you can see it. And we can mix between them with a mix RGB node, like that. And now you can scale ev every face, like this. Isn't that nice? So now we can scale them like that and 
we can use a texture for this. So I want to have a you can use a noise texture, but I want to have the wave texture for now. Plug the effect into the effector. And this is not looking good because we have to want to have this set the Z and I will lower the scale a bit. And now we can see we have one problem. And actu actually he did ha he did have the same problem. And that is because our faces are getting are scaled in different axes differently and getting distorted and that do doesn't look good at all. And he does have the same problem but he didn't solve it. So here is my solution. So we can take the captured attribute from our face and we can just plug it into the vector. And now it does work. Now it looks good. And with this we can scale it down like that. And we can animate this. So this is without the vector. They're looking a bit strange. And this is with the vector. It's better to see on the smaller ones. So this is his, his version. This is my version. Sorry. Now we can... Now we can animate it on the Z axis. And for this we have just to add a value here. And for this we will use a vector, vector mouth node. And if we will drag the Z axis you can see we can animate this. But at first if we would plug a single value in here we can try it with the new scene time node. If we plug the plug the frame in here you can see it does kinda work but we have to make it a bit clearer <coughs> sorry so we want to have only the z axis like that and now it does only animate in the z axis but we want to lower the speed a bit so this is a bit fast so we want to have maybe a math node and set it to divide and don't clamp it. <coughs> Sorry. And I want to divide it by 50, maybe. Oh no, I take 80. This is a nice speed. And yeah. So the next thing we will be making is these are infinitely thin. And for this, we can just use a solidify modifier like this. But hold on. Hold on to your papers. We just used our branch here and in the branch we have a new node that is currently in development so don't mind if your blender crashes. So here the extrude mesh node and we can use that and it just it is just the same as the solidify modifier but as a node in geometry nodes. And we can lower the strength to bring them a bit closer like this and then one difference to the solidify modifier is here the back face is gone so there's a simple solution for this you can just use a joint geometry node and just use this and then you're good to go, good to go. so one thing we can do we can make a bit of distortion here to make it a bit more distorted and I want to lower the speed a bit again and now what we can do is we are basically done with the modeling and the animating now we will go to the material and there are a few things we have to keep in mind. 
and there are a few tricks. So at first we, wa we want to create a new material. But I have no idea why this took so long. And we want to go into EV rendered mode. Like this. And we want to change the emission to be white. Sorry. And I want to make the bloom, ambient occlusion, and screen screen space reflection on. Like that. And the problem is we can't see our material. Why is this? Because we have to use a um, set material node and we have to select our material. And now it does work. Like that. So that is pretty nice. But we want to have the data from our wave texture in our shader node. So how can we do this? We can just drag it into our group output. So if you want to know more about this and you don't understand this, this is a pretty fast tutorial. Um, you can know more. So if you are a beginner, you can start with geometry nodes with my Vector Wonderland course. And this is extremely beginner friendly. There I guide you to the first steps of geometry nodes. And after that you are a pro, definitely. And then you are good to go. So I'll just rush this a little bit. So we can use this wave texture and plug it into the group output. And we can define an attribute for this wave texture to call it salad. Because we can. And then we can go to into shader nodes and we can use an attribute input node. We can just view it. It is black. Perfectly black. Well, that is fine. <coughs> we can just use our salad. Sorry. <laughs> and now you can see. Yes! We have our texture. That is nice. So you can see the black spots because they're, they're they are scaled to zero at this point, so but you can see a little gray here. So it is working. So with this we can define the emission strength, maybe. And we want to use a layer weight and a mix RGB to mix them together so and we can just set it to subtract and then we can use the facing output set to 0.86 and with this we can achieve this kind of effect like that and now our emission is fully working and we have to climb this nice but now we want to have also an object interacting with this. So we want to create another icosphere. And we want to have this influencing our effect. And we can do this by taking our object into geometry nodes. And we have to set it to relative, so it takes the current position of our object. And then we can use, um, no, we have to use a geometry proximity node to, to use the proximity from our object. So we are calculating the distance from our object or around our object. And with this data, we can just math, we can just add it on top. Oh yeah, with the add node you can also modify our your effect or you can just use the proximity. So now it is kind of working but in the opposite of what we want. But it works, hey. <laughs> Sorry. So 
now we cannot use the fuel. We have to. We can use a map, map range node, and I'm not a pro in this node, as you know. But we can just play around with it to achieve the result. So this is the fall off. Maybe something like that should be good. Maybe the half. And then we just have to swap these values. Yes, like that. So now everywhere our icosphere is, there is also a, sh a shield. And we can rotate this. Nice. So we can just animate this by using a circle and then selecting both of them, the circle at the last, and then strength and P, and then you can use follow path, and you can modify your speed by going into the graph editor, and just going here into the side panel, and under modifiers you can change this number and with this you can modify your speed of your object and I will subdivide this a bit nice like that so we have now this but we now want to have also the proximity from our sphere here also in the shader nodes and we've learned we just sorry we just have to drag it into the group output and we want to have the result from our map range because this is already modified and we just call it burger like that and then we can go into the shader nodes and here we can grab our burger and it works just like that nice so and we can just use a mix RGB node and I want to modify with the distance from our object slash the proximity I want to control the color so everywhere our object is not there should be blue and everywhere where our object is there should be red like that and this is looking pretty nice and this is the point where we can switch to cycles because there it looks much better we have to set it to GPU because it is faster but it depends on your machine but often it is faster there and I want to have a material that is glass so I drag the transmission up and the roughing is maybe 2.2 and the ball should also have a material that is transmission and a lower roughness like that and here I also want to have it like that for now yes so we can see it there floating around and then we can modify the background so I want to have the normal sky texture but this is boring right so I want to have the ozone set to the maximum and then I'll lower the sun elevation a bit not any minus but a bit 
it and then I'll take the air out maybe a bit in like that and then I have to experiment with this a bit just like that and I want to lower the strength a lot maybe to point 0.1 or so no, point 0.2 should be fine and this is pretty nice and I don't want to have a sun disk but it makes a nice reflection here so I'll take just a mix RGB node and this is a little bit of a hack I copy I duplicate this and I want to have an input and where is it? Camera data? No. I just search light path node and is camera ray. Take this for the factor. And now we have one sky texture that is in the background and one sky texture that influences our object. So this is a little hack. So here you can now change these parameters and change the background like that and you can have now these parameters that changes the object and here we don't want the sun disk and here we don't want to have this much of a Just like that and this is looking pretty nice maybe I want to make this blue a bit more saturated like that and the red also and I will lower the strength of these Point one maybe and then we can use a camera maybe here to make a nice view like that so our golden ratio is something like this and then we can go into the depth of field and then we can look at this and modify our depth of field just like that and this is pretty nice so now we can hit render and I will use the denoising data pass and the emission pass and mm, I don't like the background so this top one, right? Yes. So I maybe use the sun elevation here a bit. Yes. That is nice. Just like that. And then we can hit render but we don't want to have as many samples so 200 should be fine and we have to uncheck the noisy and then we can hit render again and then if it's rendered we can go into compositing and we can check use nodes and here we can add a viewer with strength and shift and click on the render layers node and here we can add a denoise just like that and we have to plug the denoising normal using albedo in and we can use a lens distortion with a dispersion of 0 0.01 and that should give us nice results you can save here if you want and we have to wait on how it looks but it should be okay and yeah it looks nice so 
thank you all for watching. I'll put this effect maybe on Gumroad, but let me know because the extrude node is, isn't out yet. If I should wait that the extrude node is in the master or if I just put it out and I have to say that it is an experimental. And you can check out my Gumroad. There are other things like the Christmas tree generator or the ivy generator and yeah you can give me feedback you can ask me questions and the comment of the week was on the every node in geometry nodes part 3 there Birek film commented hey very useful video since version 3.0 I have no time to learn global changes blender is developing too fast <laughs> and that is true and I lost the instance on points sub menus so this is very useful video for me thanks you for your hard work so thank you for your comment and you are now in my video so thank you and you can check out this video if you want to it is a series where I explain every node in geometry nodes and thank you and thank you all for watching